Hello everyone, I'm Vladimir. I'm a rock musician from Kiev, Ukraine, and I want to talk to you about geospatial technology. Uh, so first, let's begin with the statement. GIS is hard. It's really, really hard. It's hard to use, it's hard to understand, it's hard to learn, and it's hard to teach. And I know what I'm talking about despite being a rock musician because I spent seven years building mapping software and map applications. I work at a company called Mapbox that builds mapping tools of the future using open source and open data. And I'm the creator and the maintainer of Leaflet, perhaps the most successful open source software for interactive maps ever created. It's used by thousands of developers worldwide. Leaflet, in its essence, is a pretty simple thing. It allows you to create interactive maps with a couple lines of code. And you can pan around, you can zoom, you can put shapes on top and interact with them. And given the simplicity, uh, this uh, mapping software is used by the world's biggest websites. It's used by startups, by uh, online services with millions of users. It's used by government agencies. It's used by the biggest news media of the world. And given all that, I am still clueless about GIS. <laughs> I still don't understand most of what people talk about when I come to geospatial conferences. All those terms, abbreviations, they uh, are still really intimidating and confusing to me. <laughs> so I look like this on a typical GIS talk. So I'm clueless about GIS, but that's exactly the reason why Leaflet succeeded. And to explain why, here's a short story behind Leaflet. Uh, seven years ago, I started working for a company called CloudMate that was building business around open data, open street map. And I was young and enthusiastic and careless and very ambitious. And I thought, well, I'm doing maps now. How hard could this be? And uh, I really didn't uh, know all the hardships and complexities of the geospatial industry. I thought that maps are something really, really simple. You have a bunch of images stick together, you uh, are panning them around with a mouse, and maybe put some stuff on top. So how hard could this be? And uh, I decided to build a mapping API from scratch. I decided that it's going to be the best mapping uh, mapping API ever. It will be fast and small and uh, really cool. So I started coding right away even before the company came to us to explain to us what to do. But when I actually talked to my boss about writing an API from scratch, he said, no, we can't afford that. It's too risky and we don't want to reinvent the wheel uh, and there's already an existing major established open source solution that does everything we need and we can just use that and not waste our resources. So let's build a wrapper around this existing open source solution. So I started looking into this solution which was open layers at the time and I suddenly discovered to my huge shock that it had more than 100,000 lines of code, hundreds of feature me megabytes of code. It was huge and really, really complicated. And I got really, really scared because I couldn't understand how something so simple can be implemented in such a complex and a hard way. At first, I tried to use it for our uh, tasks, but uh, it was really slow. It was the doc documentation was confusing. It was buggy, and uh, I decided to discuss this with uh, fellow developers working on map applications. And I said in some development chat, "Hey guys, what do you think about making a simple, lightweight mapping library?" And I was told that. Uh, there is no way I could do that, that I would be wasting time uh, because it's just impossible and that I should have uh, contributed to an existing project instead and that's why I'm a bad person. <laughs> so in the end, community said that it's a worthless idea. My boss that said that it's a worthless idea. 
and I got really, really desperate. <laughs> but then uh, I thought that everyone around me tells me that I will certainly fail in something that I really strongly believe in. And I th thought that I have to prove them wrong. So I'm like, challenge accepted. And I came up with a secret plan. I decided to build the mapping software from scratch and didn't tell anyone about it. Um, I started writing day and night and I had uh, a deadline. I had a set of requirements to match. And I just started implementing everything from scratch. Uh, and uh, a couple weeks later, when I had to present my results to uh, my boss and company managers, uh, I had a first version of uh, my mapping API that was uh, really lightweight and fast and easy to use and looked pretty nice. Uh, and uh, when they saw it and tried using it, they were absolutely blown away because they couldn't understand how a map can be so fast. They never saw an interactive map working so fast in a web browser before. And they asked, like, how did I do that? Am I a wizard or, or something? And at this time, I had to confess that it's not uh, open layers and I wrote it from scratch myself. Uh, they were really, really surprised, but in the end, they decided that it's the way to go and I won. So Leafwood was born as a protest against bloat, clutter and complexity and it became successful because of that. Three years later it became open source and now you can see it pretty much everywhere on lots of websites and applications it's used for maps, for uh, data visualizations uh, on really, really different websites. And it's even used for things it was not designed for, like game maps or here's a human genome browser. How cool is that? But you may think, uh, how did it happen so that something so simple and lacking in features became so successful so fast? And it all comes down to simplicity. And to understand that, let's see how a typical person that wants to create a map application thinks. Maybe uh, you can imagine that he thinks like this. I want to learn GIS, reading books and academic papers and articles about geospatial data, map projection server site technologies, databases, different geospatial standards and protocols and their implementations and available range of server and client software perform analysis of my data and use cases, preferably involving other GIS specialists and do a lot of other research so that I can make sensible decisions about the required technology stack, adjust it to the needs of my application and finally make a freaking map. <laughs> of course, it's not how it works. Usually a person thinks, I want a map right now. Just give me the tools to do this and get the technology out of my way. The essence of software engineering is the mitigation of complexity because application development is a creative process and technology should bridge the gap between what you come up with in your mind and what you get in the end. So to enable people uh, that have amazing ideas about maps and visualizations that want to create something really cool, to enable them to actually create it, you have to make your tools that simple to get started, that simple to understand, and that simple to use. And simplicity means focus on the essentials, which leads to higher quality software uh, and more reliable software. And you don't have to cover all the use cases. It's actually <laughs> the root of all evil in technology and leads to all kinds of bad situations when you have like tens of computing standards. Uh, and you have to learn to say no to uh, new features. And simplification means focusing on features that people actually use the most. Uh, and simplicity also attracts a vibrant community uh, of people that use your tool, advocate it to others, and help others learn it. And simplicity makes people less hesitant to contribute because it's really intimidating to contribute to a complex software. Simplicity means easier profiling, less bottlenecks. That means uh, 
fast software. Uh, simplicity makes it easier to concentrate and I, I know what I'm talking about because it's hard to concentrate when you're working in a country at war and it's even harder to concentrate on a more positive note when you're a father of twin girls <laughs> which I am. Simplicity is also how the technological progress happens because when you have a hard problem and you simplify and simplify and simplify you get a manageable problem and then you try to turn it into a simple problem and when you have a simple problem you can finally move on to solve harder problem so simplification is how progress happens uh, so we come to the conclusion that simplicity is not the starting point it's actually the goal we want to strive for and simplicity enables you to do more with less and um, a big problem in the geospatial industry is that complexity is taken for granted and uh, it's a really big problem and maybe it can be in part attributed to our education system because it doesn't actually foster creativity and you learn to not challenge beliefs and to do things in a certain routine way it even comes down to something like uh, the language we speak because, like for example, uh, I uh, read the description of uh, this workshop like five times, and I still don't, still couldn't understand what it's about until I asked for a clarification. Because we learn to speak in a way that sounds very important, but could be expressed in a much simpler way. Um, so sometimes we have to unlearn to forget what we have learned for years. To actually create some something simple and uh, you don't think about simplicity when complexity is taken for granted the same way that you don't realize the benefits of regular exercise when until you become more physical fit I'm a big fan of fitness I do things like this and uh, when it comes to exercise I think that simplicity is a muscle it needs to be exercised consistently the same as you exercise muscles. So I want to ask you one last thing. Let's make a collective conscious effort to simplify GIS technology so that we can be happy and build more awesome stuff. And sometimes it will be very hard but eventually it will lead to us being happy and free. Thank you.